southeastern Pennsylvania, the heart of Amish country, and the birthplace of Auntie Anne's soft pretzels. That is an Auntie Anne's pretzel right there. And this oh, is Auntie Anne, otherwise known as Ann Byler. Oh, hun, that's a little bit fat. Her husband Jonas helped develop the recipe. They knew it was delicious, but never expected the public's insatiable appetite for it. It was just a surprise for us to go from one market stand and uh, a number of years later, we had this huge international franchising company. The road to get there took enormous strength and courage. The Bylers credit their perseverance to their upbringing as Amish children. Perseverance is really just simply means doing what you don't feel like doing. And so on the farm, I, I learned a lot of just doing what I didn't feel like doing. Amish culture also instilled them with a solid work ethic. I've watched my dad do business on a handshake. He'd do odd jobs for farmers and tell them, when you get your milk check, send me a check. But Jonas longed for a more modern lifestyle. At 15, he made the tough decision not to be Amish. Two years later, he started an auto body shop. And in 1968, when he was 21, he married Anne. At the same time Ann said yes to Jonas, she also said a final goodbye to being Amish. I left the Amish Mennonite Church. I was 19, and uh, it was very difficult. As hard as it was to leave the comfort of the community, nothing could prepare them for the pain they were about to endure. It was September 1975. By then, the Bylers had two little girls, four-year-old Lawana and a 19-month-old toddler named Angela Joy. Angela took a little walk up to Grandma's house that morning, and uh, my sister, who was driving a bobcat, uh, working for my dad, um, she didn't see Angie and drove over her, and she was killed instantly. But Jonas and I, from that day on, we began to drift apart, simply because we didn't know how to talk about our grief. We lived in that very difficult place in our marriage for seven years. A lot of, a lot of very negative things went down. I was in depression, and I, I was suicidal, and I really thought that life was over for me. It was, it was a very dark time. To save the marriage and herself, Anne agreed to couples counseling. It rescued her relationship with Jonas and inspired him to work at easing others' pain. And he became very um, intrigued with, wow, this is counseling, this is amazing, and we can help other people. And so he began counseling just out of our home. I was so appreciative as a wife that I felt like I would do anything. What she did was go to work at a farmer's market to support Jonas, who was providing his counseling services for free. Then in 1988, they invested in their own stand at the Downington Farmer's Market. We made a loan from my dad for $6,000, and I thought I was signing my life away. They made pretty good pizza, savory stromboli, but their pretzels? The pretzels were just a pain to me. I was like, you know, they're not good. They were yellow, they were sorry tasting. <laughs> I told him, I'm not gonna sell pretzels anymore, we're just gonna do pizza and ice cream. And he said, well, before you give up on the pretzels, let me just try something. So he comes back and he adds some ingredients to the existing mix that we had. So we opened the, the oven door and it's like, wow, they look different. First customer came up for a pretzel, took a bite, as they were walking away, and he came back and said, what is this? I said, it's a soft pretzel. Wow, I said, this is amazing. Soon others flocked to their stand, but they were still missing an important ingredient, a name. And then my friend said to me, well, why don't you just call it Auntie Anne's Pretzels because everybody calls you Auntie Anne anyway. They continued selling other items, but nothing came close to those warm golden goodies. So they dropped everything else and in one day, rang up $2,000 in pretzel sales alone. We were selling pretzels 55 cents a piece, three for $1.50. And we were able to start a savings account. Then someone suggested they open a second stand at another market in Harrisburg, PA. Instead of celebrating, Anne got cold feet. She cried all the way home from Harrisburg because she didn't want to spend her savings. I said, why are we doing this? We're making good money and in Downingtown. Not only that, but it was just to hire more people and to just duplicate that, she knew that it was a lot of work. We didn't have a formal education. Uh, we had no capital, and we didn't have a business plan. Early on in the life of Auntie Anne's, I, I cried a lot because uh, 
We didn't really plan on building a big company. Taking a leap of faith, they bought the Harrisburg stand, had similar success, and soon others wanted to open their own Auntie Anne shops. But both buyers had second thoughts about franchising. We were not prepared and really didn't want to get into that kind of an agreement with people. I want to make sure that our franchisees, I really wanted them to be successful. It was really important to me. So they started slowly, opening only about 10 locations in 1989. Anne was visiting every shop, teaching her pretzel twisting technique. It's very easy, like that. That's how you do it. <laughs> While Jonas was dealing with contracts and building store interiors between counseling sessions. When still more wanted in on Auntie Anne's success, the Bylers knew they needed business help. We hired people to do what we could not do. Uh, didn't have time to do, uh, maybe didn't want to do. We put somebody else in the training department, so now any time a franchisee came in, we had a two-week training program. By the end of 1990, with corporate systems securely in place, they had pretzels popping out of 50 different shops, mostly in the eastern U.S., and that was just the beginning. We had 40, 50, 75, 100 stores. They were collecting a 5% royalty from each location and continuing to work closely with the franchisees. Eventually, the Bylers wanted to cash out and devote full time to Jonas's counseling services. So they sold the pretzel empire to Jonas's cousin Sam Byler, who'd been working for the company from the very start. The sales price remains private, but at the time, Auntie Anne's had more than 850 locations worldwide and revenues well into 12 digits. System-wide sales at that time were 250 million system-wide sales. While they found time to have fun on their Harleys, they poured most of their time and money into building Jonas's dream, this 55,000 square foot family center in the heart of Amish country. It houses a thrift shop, a library, cafe, and of course, a counseling center. Anne still likes visiting the stores and seeing happy customers. She's also glad the company's continuing to flourish with sales in 2010 of more than $350 million. That's a lot of pretzels. I feel like Auntie Anne's is just, um, although it's in different hands, they really stand on the path that we, that we created.